So you wanted a quick, more detailed tutorial about Cascader. Not a problem. If you click home, pick whatever rig is best for you. From here, Cascader uses basic industry standard alt to left click and middle button mouse controls. You can go up here and toggle between the traditional rig, mesh, and wireframe modes that we all know and love. And on the right under the outliner are all the usual hierarchy stuff for everything in the scene. When you click a part of the rig, you will activate a gizmo, which again can be used to do all the usual position, rotation, and scale stuff. Now, if you drag the feet, you'll notice it moves the rest of the body to best fit wherever you're dragging automatically. The way this system works is any controller that you adjust will turn blue. Anything that is not blue will get dragged when you start moving things around. So if I start to adjust the chest, you will now see it turns blue. And when I drag the feet now, the chest is no longer affected as much when I move around the feet. Use this to your advantage when you're creating a new pose. If you ever want to remove a blue controller, left click it and press shift Z and it will no longer resist movement. You can also drag select multiple points and do more than one at the same time. And if you hold shift, you can select multiple things at once once, and if you double click a joint, it will automatically select it and all of its children. Control Z and Shift Control Z undo and redo. Down here you will see the timeline, keyframes are blue, and if you make any adjustments to the rig while on a keyframe, those changes get saved automatically. So if you scroll down and make another keyframe to make a different pose, you don't have to worry about ruining the last one. This includes blue controls. You'll notice that if I deselect the blue control on this frame, it's still blue on the frame before it. So don't be afraid to make big changes from one keyframe to another. They are completely separate. You can move a keyframe with middle click drag, if you hold shift and middle click, you'll be able to duplicate a frame and drag it wherever you want. You can also left click drag multiple frames and then duplicate them all at the same time. At any point, if you click this button, it will scale the timeline to fit your key frames. You can always right click these DAC buttons to revert back to the full view as well and change the number of total frames by clicking and typing into this number. If there's anything that you want to mirror, select the joints you want to mirror, then up here, choose what plane you want to mirror things on. If you want to mirror the animation globally, keep pelvis position on. But if you want to mirror things locally, turn off pelvis position. When you have multiple keyframes, it will default to flat transitions. But if you select all the frames and then go up here and pick Bezier clamp, it will smooth the transition between keyframes. If you feel that the time in between frames is off, you can always press plus or minus on the keyboard to add and subtract frames. Once you've got the main process smoothed out, you can go up and turn auto physics on to preview your animation. And from this point, you can add things like secondhand motion by selecting parts of the rig that you want to add secondhand motion to. Decide all the frames you wanted to be applied to, then go up and check the second hand motion box. Then go down here and check the red box and change the local blending to anything between zero and 100. Zero is a lot of movement, 100 is no movement. If you increase the dampening, you'll make the second hand motion more relaxed. Keep in mind this is dependent on what frames you selected before you activated this. We have it set to the whole timeline, but if I had only selected one frame when I applied this, that would be the only frame second hand motion was applied to. Now, if you ever want to add some extra recoil or cooldown animation, just duplicate that frame, left click somewhere in the middle, add a bezier curve, and recalculate the physics. It will then automatically add some in between frames for you. Now you might be wondering where the fingers are, and by default you'll have to access them in box mode. From this point you can use the standard rotation gizmos to move the fingers where you need. Be careful though because these are not restrained, so if you use the position gizmo you might actually start deforming things. And when you're adjusting the fingers, make sure you are on local rotation, not global rotation. The official website recommends that you just make a file with, with all of the hand positions you like so that you can copy and paste them into projects later on when you need them. Lastly, if you have things like weapons that you would like to import to your character, you can just go to File, Import, and bring them into your scene and control them with the mesh mode for all the keyframes that you need. You can also just straight up add a reference video using the same method, set how much of the video you want, and once again in mesh mode, place it and rotate it wherever you need to start tracing your animations. When you're done, Go up, hit apply snap to physics, and export it wherever you need. You're done. Those are all the features I normally use in Cascader. I hope that helps, and as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.